Hey, welcome back to The Consulog, a weekly show about JavaScript and the web at large. This is the week of October 23rd to October 29th, and a lot of very interesting things happened this week. So without further intro rambling, let's get into the meat of it. First news item off the presses is that Firebug, uh, a the original web inspector tool for Firefox is finally going to be killed. It has reached its 12 year lifespan and uh, next month when the Firefox browser releases Firefox uh, Quantum with version 57, they've actually re re rewritten the core engine of Firefox, which means that Firebug as it works now is no longer compatible, which means that Firebug is now going away. In case you never use Firebug, Firebug was the OG web inspector. This is the one that started pretty much all of modern web 2.0 applications. Without Firebug, there would be no Chrome web inspector, no Safari inspector. This was the original one that actually paved the way to show you actually how to uh, inspect and actually understand what was going on on your website. So it's pretty sad to see that Firebug is finally dying after 12 years, which is many lifetimes in the world of tech, it has had a very productive and hugely impactive life. So uh, here's to you, Firebug. You were amazing, and thank you so much for what you have done for us. In the world of React, because that is everybody's favorite topic, mine included, uh, there was a PR this week where React removed their haste module system. Now, to give some background on that and why this is a big deal, Haste is the way in which React and a lot of internal Facebook tools does module resolution. Module resolution being common JS or ES modules. Haste was an in-house module resolution software that Facebook made before those things existed. And when uh, React was open sourced, this kind of just was brought into the open source community because they didn't have the time to actually migrate it to the more open source common systems. But there was a PR this past week where it was finally removed from the React project. And that's great because now new contributors to React will be a little bit less confused about how, when you see a require of an absolute module, like where is that coming from? Like where, where, where is this thing coming from? Now it's just common JS and ES modules, much more straightforward. So this is a good move towards being a little bit more friendly to the open source uh, JavaScript community. Um, so it's pretty cool. I think it's important that you should know because if you do want to hack on React, now it's even easier today. Ah, uh, CSS, everybody's favorite language to shit on. Well, there is an article that was published this past week on CSS tricks about the history of CSS and how it came to be. Uh, a lot of things in there I had no idea about. And I always love learning about how things came to be because having that background context definitely gives you a little bit more understanding and uh, context over how and why things are. So in this article, it talks about how HTML was started in 1990 now, it wasn't until 1994 that CSS was even whispered in the web community, if it wasn't even a community at that point, just a few people on a mailing list. And it wasn't until March 2002 that the first browser was shipped with full CSS1 support. And you'll never guess what browser it is. I'm going to spoil it now, so if you don't want to hear it, just you know, uh, skip ahead 10 seconds. But it was uh, Internet Explorer 5 for Macintosh was the first browser to support the full specification of CSS1, which is... Very unexpected, but very cool. Definitely give it a read. It's chock full of very cool information. And actually links at the bottom to a new newsletter that somebody has started up about the history of the web. A weekly or a somewhat weekly newsletter talking all about how things came to be on the web. And that's I just love that type of stuff. So if you are interested in that type of stuff, I definitely encourage you to also tune into that as well. So props to that person who's making that article because if we don't know how things came to be, then we were just doomed to repeat the mistakes of our past, right? History repeats itself. You want that blink tag again? Because I sure don't. <laughs> Keeping in the realm of CSS, we were talking about the history of CSS. Now let's actually talk about the future of CSS. And you may have heard of this thing called CSS Houdini. CSS Houdini is a new working group that is working on a new API in the browser to both allow you to introspect and also program the CSS engine in browsers. So what does that mean? It means that nowadays we have Babel, right? We have Babel which takes ES6 code and puts it into ES5 code. And that works because that code is still using the same JavaScript version and the same uh, APIs that exist in the browser. 
However, you want to extend CSS, there is no way that you can do that right now because what you see is what you get and there is no API in the browser that you can say CSS dot add new property. There is no, that doesn't exist. This is what this project is all about. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because somebody has published a new uh, example website of actually using the CSS Houdini API to make new CSS attributes work. This is like the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. My favorite one is the uh, tooltip experiment where you can actually natively, well, Houdini natively, create a easy tooltip, a little carrot at the bottom for your web application. So uh, definitely keep this on your radar because CSS Houdini is the real deal, in my opinion. It's gonna be big, making all the web browsers lives a lot, all the web designers lives a lot easier. So having this whole website showing examples uh, only works in Canary as far as, as as it works for me or a flag if you have Chrome, but it's very, very cool. So uh, CSS Houdini is happening, it, it's in progress, and and oh, oh, it's gonna be so cool. Oh, it's gonna be, oh yeah. Okay, so those are the top news items that I wanted to talk to you about this week. However, there were, were a few other things that I wanted to highlight, but not in as great of detail because they're more just headlines. And I'm just gonna do a rapid fire round of just things that you should know. And if you wanna actually learn more about them, you can delve into the links themselves, but I'll give you the high level bullet points of what they are and why you should care. So let's start with number one. Uh, VS Code, my new favorite editor, is moving back to using a blue icon because the entire community said, WTF, why is it orange? Don't like my pumpkin spice latte as my web icon. Number two, Apollo Client 2.0 was released, which is really awesome. It has a lot of great improvements that were contributed from the community, making it a lot more extensible and customizable for your use in your GraphQL applications. Number three, Reason ML 3.0 was released. Reason ML is Facebook's OCaml inspired language similar to Elm and this new release brings about a lot of new syntax changes that makes it a lot easier to use for existing JavaScript engineers. So if you do have an interest in Reason ML, it just got a whole lot easier to migrate from JavaScript. Number four, finally, promise.finally is finally here. Ha! It is enabled by default in V8 6.3. 0.165 plus, I had that memorized, so I don't know if you could tell, <laughs> not really, uh, and also Chrome 63 plus. Okay, that was it. That was the console log. Hopefully you've learned some things that you missed this past week. Hopefully you have gained some knowledge, you have upgraded your intelligence, you have increased your powers as a web developer and designer. And then next week when you come back, you'll learn even more. And if you are not already, please do hit the subscribe button and tell your friends, family, and pets that this show exists because I want to make sure that everybody has the best knowledge that they can get to be the best web engineer that they can be. So without any further ado, I say goodbye and see you again next week.